Apps like Zoom should not exist. It's such a privacy and security nightmare that even the world's biggest congregation of boomer-level tech intelligence ban its members from using it. How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? This feels weird. This feels wrong. Senator, we run ads. Imagine being a Zoom executive, watching your company grow into a global meme, and then see it all crumble as Elon Musk bans its use at SpaceX because of privacy and security concerns. Zoom is so bad at this right now that its top executives are being sued by their own investor for lying about its encryption, concealing security issues, and hiding data sharing practices. So if you're watching this video and you are a Zoom user or know someone who is, then I hope to convince you to stay away from it as much as possible. Maybe you're using Zoom for the memes, maybe you were forced into Zoom by your boss or school, whatever the case is, this needs to stop. Zoom has been called anything from a malware to a corrupt organization by security experts raising alarms about its incredible security and privacy problems. Here is why you should immediately delete your Zoom account, uninstall the app and drill through your motherboard. By the way, for some reason YouTube decided to algorithmically kill my channel. I'm doing way worse than when I had third of my sub count. Can we try to revert it by going totally overboard with engagement please? Please hit that like button like crazy. Comment whatever is on your mind. What I want to know is if you had any privacy or security incident while using Zoom. Please tell us about it in the comments. Let's expand the record of bad data practices of this company. Make sure you watch the video till the end, that's crucial. And share this video all over the place so that people can learn about the truth behind Zoom. Also, my Patreon is down below. Feel free to donate to access more weekly content. First of all, let's start with the fact that Zoom was straight out lying about its service. In its white paper, Zoom stated the support for end-to-end -end encryption was available to hosts to establish secure meetings. But a Zoom spokesperson later revealed in a comment to The Intercept that no E2E encryption was available nor possible for video meetings in Zoom. The only video encryption Zoom is using is a standard TLS encryption that's common on most websites with HTTPS connection. This level of encryption only protects your data in transit, like on a public Wi-Fi or from your ISP but it doesn't prevent Zoom or its third parties from transcribing or listening in on your video calls. Once they have your calls, they can do with them whatever they want. Transcribe them, solve them, monetize them. And when a company holds your data, their record of handling it is important. Zoom will have you believe they take users' privacy extremely seriously, except for when they sell your data to Facebook or Google and won't even tell you about it especially when it comes to Facebook. Zoom has been using Facebook Software Development Kit to develop its mobile apps. The SDK is a piece of pre-compiled code that developers can use to build certain features into their apps. It's a standard practice, not a big deal. But it's also how Facebook can steal your private information even if you have never installed a Facebook app on your phone. Anytime you launch the app, Zoom immediately sends Facebook your unique advertiser ID, time zone and city you are in, a device model, and your phone carrier. Facebook then knows exactly who is using Zoom and how. Zoom's privacy policy mentions that their third-party partners collect this information, but it said nothing about Facebook. This is in breach of Facebook's own terms that require developers to disclose to their users that Facebook would have access to their data. So in a way, you could say that Zoom has worse standards at dealing with user privacy than Facebook, which is already bad enough. Now, Zoom has since removed the Facebook SDK from their app, after pretending they didn't know Facebook was collecting all of that data. But the issue of bad data practices still remains. Zoom tries the traditional appeal to the privacy crowd when they say, Zoom does not mine user data or sell data of any kind to anyone. But then they are trying to weasel their way out of it by twisting the definition of selling. Zoom doesn't think it is selling your data because when they send it to third parties, they do not receive direct payments in exchange. Zoom does admit they are using third-party trackers to improve advertising experience with whom they are sharing your data. So in other words, Zoom is selling your data to other companies not for money, but to serve ads for which they earn money. That's like me saying I don't earn money from my videos because I release them for free. This is important because it apparently worked with the regulators who designated Zoom as FERPA compliant. FERPA, or Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, is a set of rules based on which colleges and schools choose software to work with with their students. Zoom received FERPA designation because companies like it get away with self-regulating and defining what constitutes breach of privacy. 
On top of the privacy nightmare, Zoom comes preloaded with horrible security vulnerabilities. An ex-NSA hacker discovered recent bugs in Zoom that would let attackers take over MacBook microphones and webcams. Another two security researchers found a bug in Zoom that allowed hackers to steal Windows passwords. Before Apple released an update, Zoom installed a hidden web server on people's Macs that allowed websites to automatically add infected users to a video call without their permission. FBI has released an announcement warning users of Zoom bombing. This is where Zoom generates URL links that can be used to access meetings, but hackers can easily guess them and hijack their sessions, which has led to a barrage of trolling and harassment. And Zoom had to release a statement to explain people how to protect themselves from getting bombed. As another oopsie, Zoom leaked photos, emails, and other personal information of thousands of users to random strangers, giving them the ability to attempt to start a video call with them. This wasn't so much of a bug as it was a feature. Zoom automatically adds other people to a user's list of contacts if they share the same email domain. Which makes sense if you use a company email, but it's a disaster if you sign up with your personal email account. And it's probably how Zoom managed to inflate their user account and create the illusion they are a leading and emerging video conferencing platform. While some of these features have been fixed and Zoom promised to improve its policies within the next 90 days, the app has some fundamental features that have been harshly criticized by privacy advocates. Zoom has an attention tracking feature that will let your boss know when you're not focused on the call window. Zoom doesn't notify participants that the host enabled attention tracking for their call. Zoom administrators have the ability to access contents of recorded calls, including video, audio transcripts, and chat files. For any video calls in their organization, they can see users' operating systems, IP addresses, location data, and device information. These administrators can also join any call in their organization at any moment without the warning or consent from the attendees of the call. While some would find these dystopian features useful, others took a sharp turn on Zoom. The app use was officially banned by the UK's Ministry of Defense, New York City Schools, and SpaceX, among many others. It only makes sense to ban the use of Zoom. If you have a business, you're potentially leaking your intellectual property or trade secrets to your competition. If you're a teacher and you force your students to use Zoom for online classes, you're exposing children's privacy to an advertising-based company with a horrible track record and are putting them at risk of being hacked and harassed by strangers. Don't use Zoom. Don't use it for personal communication. Tell your boss they're exposing their business and employees to harm and abuse. Tell your school to be responsible with children's privacy and use encrypted apps, preferably open source ones. In 2020, after so many scandals of mishandling of users' privacy, data breaches and surveillance, apps like Zoom should not exist. They are a step backwards. Thank you kindly for watching. If you liked the video, please keep the engagement on this one as high as possible. I talked about Zoom to my patrons way ahead of this video, so if you like more up-to-date coverage, join my Patreon page. I also have Monero and Bitcoin wallets for anonymous donations. Thank you for your support.